Well, good day to you. It is February the 3rd, which means that we are already into the 14th month, 2020. <laughs> yep. All right. Now, wherever you are, whenever you happen to be listening to this video, I hope you're doing well, staying safe. I hope there's joy in your life. In other words, hopefully you're having a great day. Now, if this is your first time ever listening to Search for Signs, real quick, let me introduce myself. My name is Gary Willing. And what we talk about here is infinitely more important than that, for sure. We talk about the emergence of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. Why are they returning now to the everyday world? What's, what does it mean for you and everybody else? And what their priorities are? And, of course, what you can do to personally help. All right. Um, now, if you are new to this channel and you want some background information, we have over 300 videos where we talk about this. And then in the description of each video are links. You can do... Your own research at your pace, you can click on these links, takes you to a, what's called a website, <laughs> and you can get as much information about this information as you want. You don't have to take my word for it for being true, and you don't have to take those people who seem to crawl out from underneath their rock from time to time and post nasty comments because they hate what I say. You don't have to take their word for it either. You can do your own research and make up your own damn mind. I mean, we're all adults here, okay? So this information is always for you just to look at, to consider, to take in for yourself, and decide for yourself whether it's true for you or not, okay? And then do with it what you what you will, okay? Now, um, I do want to say this real quick. Yesterday was the two-year anniversary of when I started Search for Signs, and for all the people who have supported this channel, however you've supported it, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And the spectrum of support goes from anybody who listens to a video for 10 seconds, turns the video off, and gets on with their life and never comes back, to those people who listen to more than one video, comment, reply, those kind of things. If it wasn't for you, we would not be where we're at today. And when I started this channel back two years ago, uh, yesterday, I had no idea what to expect. I didn't think much was going to happen with it, you know, and it's far exceeded my expectations. Now, looking into the future, because I don't want to dwell too much on the past, um, I have to say, uh, I don't know where we'll be in two years from now. Hopefully, we will be living in a much different world, a world where we're at least starting to make some effort into solving the the pressing problems that have been kind of put off by humanity for so long, the environment, the principle of sharing, you know, the ending of hunger, those kind of things, bringing about justice, bringing about peace. Those are the biggest priorities that Maitreya has for humanity, and we need to start looking at doing and working on those things, or there's not going to be much of a future for humanity on this planet. <laughs> so uh, we got to get started kind of soon. So hopefully over the next two years, we'll be talking about other stuff, <laughs> okay? But anyway, again, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Now, I have some questions to cover in this video and some comments to look at. And of course, if you have a uh, question or two you want to ask about this information, feel free to post your question as a comment. You can also email me at searchforsignsatmail.com. The email is in the description of the videos too, and you'll get nearly the same response. And if you're somebody like me, because I'm like this when I listen to YouTube videos, I don't really post questions or comments. I just kind of listen and get on with my day. That's, there's nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, all right, let's get on into it. Now, the first series of questions comes from Patsy B. And Patsy, I have to apologize to you personally um, that I did not answer the first three questions that you asked because I kind of got lost in the last question that you asked and then forgot to answer the first three. So I do apologize. If you're listening, sorry about that. Now, the four questions. You got, who is Maitreya? Who is this Maitreya that is showing itself on TV? Why don't you say who it is? Tell people what is Maitreya not the Antichrist? Now, the last video, I kind of went off on a tangent about the last question. Is Maitreya not the Antichrist? Now, after talking about this ad nauseum in the last video, I think the best way to answer that question and the simplest way is to simply switch the words is and the name Maitreya. 
is Maitreya not the Antichrist? Should just read, Maitreya is not the Antichrist. How about that? <laughs> okay. And then you can believe it or not. So, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. Now, the, the third question, tell people what? I don't know what that means, so I can't answer that question. But the other two, I can. Who is this Maitreya that is showing itself on TV today? And why don't you say who it is? Maitreya is not an it. Maitreya is a he. Okay. Now, there's more to who Maitreya is than just his physical nature. But, w you know, when you see him on TV, when you, if you meet him in person or you see him, you know, in a crowd of people, he looks just as physical as you, me, your Uncle Harold, your cousin Susie, you know, and whoever, you know, your coworker Joe, you know, I mean, he's just as physical as that. Okay. Now, what separates Maitreya from us in a, not separates it, what differentiates is a better word, a better word okay? Because Maitreya would say there's no difference between he and I, or you and him, or whoever, right? What a master is. Now, Maitreya, first of all, Maitreya was the first one of our humanity to become a master. Since then, there have been several others, but he's the first one to become a master, and he, he, he became a master millions of years ago, Okay long before recorded history. Now, who and what a master is? A master is someone who manifests their inner divinity moment to moment perfectly without exception. They never slip up. They never make mistakes. They never have a bad day. They truly are a, is perfectly a soul in incarnation. Now, for us, we are souls and we are an incarnation, but we haven't started to really manifest that quality moment to moment in the same way that the masters do. It takes time, it takes lifetimes, it, it takes, you know, struggle to get to that point. And there's a path that we're all on to get to that point eventually. Now, the, the path for all of us will start to accelerate and we will accelerate on that path to becoming a master. Once we see these masters for who they are, once we start to see Maitreya every day, and not only for the rest of this life, but in our next life, and then the life after that, and the life after that. So we will be learning directly from these masters, where for eons, we had no memory of these masters, right? Now, there was a time, Patsy and everybody else, there was a time when these masters were out teaching and guiding humanity directly, the way that they will be doing in the not-so-distant future, and for now on. They... There's a reason why, but they chose to leave the public eye and live in what we would consider to be total isolation. Okay, now they weren't isolated because they don't operate like that. They're they're totally at one with everything, even when they're physically by themselves. But they were physically removed from the public eye. Now, since then, and this was a hundred thousand years ago that this happened. So it, that's the reason why there's no real record in our history about these masters until now. But they've worked, they've guided, they've taught humanity, but indirectly through their disciples in the world. So any man or woman of any note, whether it's been a little bit of effort and a little bit of uh, progress made from who or what that, that person was to a great deal of progress, was working either consciously or unconsciously with one or other of these masters to help bring about the plan of the masters to help humanity. Now, they knew when they left 100,000 years ago, they knew that at some point they would have to come back. It was hoped that the, from their point of view, even 100 years ago, it was hoped that they would, they would be able to come back in about 1,000 years. So their plan changed quite recently. And the reason why it changed is, one, the Axis powers were defeated in World War II, but the second reason, which is the most important, is we could destroy ourselves nuclearly. So they knew that if they didn't come back and Maitreya didn't come back into the world, we would destroy ourselves. So that's why they they scrapped the original plan of coming back in the year 3000-ish and, and came back now. Now, they there were some things that had to happen that humanity had to accomplish in order for the teacher to come back. The first one is we had to create a, there had to be a measure of peace. The principle of sharing had to at least start to govern the minds of the world leaders. And the third thing was the political parties had to start cleaning house. Now, each one of those three, from our point of view, and at least from my point of view, not a lot of progress was made, but it was enough progress that Maitreya could come back into the world. Prior to Maitreya coming in, into London, 
uh, five masters entered five different cities. The first one went into New York. Second one went into London, Geneva, Darjeeling, and finally Tokyo. And then not long after that, two more masters went into two different cities, one into Rome and one into Moscow. Now, the one in Rome, uh, according to Benjamin Crumb's master, is the master who was Jesus, the master Jesus. And we'll eventually be working with the churches, uh, the Christian churches, to help clean up the distortions of their teachings, to help bring it truer to what Jesus was talking about 2,000 years ago. But the other masters, we don't know their names, we don't know where they are, but they are living in, on the outskirts of those cities. And then since then, a master here, a master there entered their posts. Like one, there's, according to Ben's master, there's a master in L.A. There's a master in San Francisco too. There's one in Paris and that kind of thing. So there's other masters that are starting to enter the world, and they're waiting for Maitreya to come out and declare himself openly before the world, and then Maitreya will start to introduce these masters one by one. So that's kind of a the synopsis of. The, the progress of the uh, coming forward of the masters. Now, why are they here? Okay. Each one of us is divine. Now, but the question is, are we manifesting that divinity moment to moment perfectly, right? I live in Atlanta. I get frustrated with traffic. I know my soul is not manifesting itself during my traffic. You know, I'm stuck in traffic and people cut me off. I get upset. I get frustrated. I honk my horn sometimes. So my soul is not manifesting perfectly right now. These masters are coming back to teach us how to be like them, how to be masters, to help create or to help manifest our divinity. But along with that, we have to build the structures, the political, economic, social structures, healthcare structures, even the artistic structures that help support that divinity. Right now, our political structures, very much right and left politics, economic divisions and the economic um, uh structures. You know, we're living in a world where we have the Jeff Bezos, the the Elon Musk of the world, I mean, ultra rich, and then we have the ultra poor. And the ultra poor, there's a lot more ultra poor than there are ultra rich, of course, right? So the economic structures are not supporting that divinity. We're also living in a world where every one of us is, in our own mind, is immune to to other to the problems of the world to a greater or lesser extent we don't see it as an extension of ourselves we only see it as that's just happened to somebody else if it's not happened to me well oh well you know that kind of thing so the as the masters start to teach us to manifest our own divinity of course we need to, to create the structures to help support that that's why and then the other structures the old structures that aren't supporting that are naturally falling apart <laughs> so that's the reason why they're here because if we if they weren't here our old structures would fall apart because they're not supporting humanity and we wouldn't build any new structures then then we would just be living in a a world with just a bunch of anarchy so and that wouldn't be good for very many people so that's why that's why they are here now um Maitreya according to Benjamin Krem, who made the announcement in January 2010, has been giving interviews on TV at least since January 2010. He didn't say that Maitreya did his first interview in January 2010. That's an important part because people miss, they um, uh, thought uh, a guy named Raj Patal was Maitreya. And, you know, that was, according to Benjamin Krem, not, that's not, he's not Maitreya. (laughs) So, and it was because he did an interview. He looked kind of like Maitreya. He was Indian. He was talking about justice. And he did an interview on PBS in January. But my, Benjamin Krem never said when Maitreya first did his interview. He might have been months before. And just had to hold off on the announcement until January. I don't know. And since then has been giving interviews all around the world, according to Benjamin Krem's master. Now, I know of two people who have met two people who who claimed to have seen Maitreya on TV. And one is a very good friend of mine, and I trust her because she's, uh, from as far as I'm concerned, never lied to me. But she was giving a talk about Maitreya, and a woman came up and told her that she had seen him on TV and was sure of it. She also told my friend that the picture of Maitreya, which is the very popular one of him, him in Nairobi, Kenya, with the headdress, he doesn't look anything like that from what she said. And he wasn't even talking about sharing or those kind of things, justice. He was talking about politics. So 
but she said that he, she knew from, she had a heartfelt response to who he was, that she knew that that's who he was. Now, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but that's what she said. And then there was another friend of mine who had spoken to some people who had said that they had seen him on TV. Now, me personally, I have not recognized him on TV yet. I might have seen him. You might have seen him. Other people might have seen him. And I'm sure there's a, a very strong possibility that you have. And I've always posed this as a question, Patsy, to, to, or at least a possibility to people, not a question, but I've posed this as a possibility to people that when you do finally recognize Maitreya on TV and you're like, oh, that's the guy right there, that you'll, there are probably more than likely you had seen him before on TV, right? You might even have, be familiar with his name. I don't know right? So somebody else might look at it and go, I've never seen that guy before. <laughs> but you know, I like what he has to say. You know, I mean, it could happen. You could go either way, right? But if he is speaking to millions of people, then, you know, there's a good likelihood that that all of us have seen him at least once. Now, the reason why I'm not talking about it, and the reason why you shouldn't talk about it, or anybody else should be talking about it is, it's very, very important when you do recognize Maitreya on TV not to say who it is because it's it's more important for all of us to recognize Maitreya for ourselves, to have a heartfelt response that that is Maitreya. And also, it's more important to hear Maitreya's words and want for the world what he's advocating and not just because you believe it's Maitreya or you told somebody else it was Maitreya and now they're going to follow him because you said that that was Maitreya. Do you see what I'm saying? It's far better just to let it go and just, he will eventually declare himself and we'll all know at the same time. And then you'll know. <laughs> so that's the reason why I'm not saying who it is. So there is a reason why. But the other reason is I, I don't think I've recognized him yet. I don't think I've seen him yet because I don't, the news that I watch, I only watch on YouTube. And I, I watch it from various sources. You know, I watch Fox News. I watch CNN. I watch other ones. So I kind of get, I kind of watch the, um, you know, I kind of, cherry pick the news that I want to watch. Cause I don't really like opinion news where I'm sitting there just listening to opinions going back and forth. It just, it, it bores the hell out of me. So I'd rather just hear what's going on in the news, see what's going on with the today's events and then move on. So that's probably more the likely reason why I haven't seen them. Cause I don't really watch news like that. So I don't know, but Anyway, hopefully that answers that question and hopefully that kind of puts it to rest. But if you have any other questions about it or I didn't answer it the way that you wanted, Patsy, feel free to circle back around and ask me again. All right. Now, the next comment comes from Chad de Lanier. You don't have to be a quote unquote Trump supporter to realize elections have been rigged for years. That is true. <laughs> and the fact that you were a Bernie supporter is hilarious, given that they rigged the Democratic primaries against him twice. That is for sure. But yeah, I'm sure Biden won fair and square. Um, okay, so first of all, yes, I do think elections have been rigged for a long time on both sides, on Democrats and Republicans. I, I get it, right? And I was thinking about how to answer this question. One, one thing that came up, first of all, before I get into it, is as much as I love Abraham Lincoln, right? I mean, he's probably the most revered president in history, right? He actually, when, when they were, you know, and this is kind of the dark side of, of Lincoln, but, <laughs> and I would have disagreed with this, you know, if I had been around alive during that time, but when uh, Maryland was deciding whether or not to secede from the Union, there was actually a strong likelihood that Maryland was going to actually side with the South. And he, he saw that he needed Maryland as a cushion with uh, Washington, D.C. and the South. So he needed Maryland to stay in the Union, okay? What he did was, quite unscrupulous, he actually rounded up all the Confederate sympathizers in the state legislature in Maryland and had them under house arrest. And then the, 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 um, those in the uh, state legislature of Maryland who were Union supporters all voted to stay in the Union. And then he let the other people out. <laughs> so was that fair and square? No, but it... it it definitely um, worked out in the end, right? So there was also there's also been rumors for decades that JFK didn't win that election fair and square. That that Joe, his father, made a lot of shady deals to um, you know have that election rigged. You know, so, I mean, I don't. I mean, dude, I don't know, man. I mean, it's they're all over the place. I mean, politics is warfare, first of all. And I don't think war is fair at all. I think it's it's all, you know, unscrupulous. Now, you did, probably didn't hear this, Chad, but back 
I want to say it was in April, I put up a video where I talked about this. I was pissed at Biden. And not so much at Biden, but the the Democratic primary. Because here in Georgia, the Democratic primary is in March. And that was right when COVID hit and they had all the lockdowns. And they actually um, postponed the primary here in Georgia. I was all ready to vote for Bernie Sanders, right? They postponed it a few weeks later. All of a sudden now Biden is the presumptive nominee because he got all these, you know, delegates from all these other states and then the super delegates and all that crap, right, that they all have, right? I was mad because my voice wasn't heard. Now, what I was saying, Chad, not that Biden's perfect. I never once said he was perfect. I am giving him a chance. I did give Trump a chance. Now, you didn't know this, you know, because you don't know me, but I actually kept my mouth shut for two years. And then finally, I was like, I can't take any more of this, man. I, And that's when I started getting, you know, a little bit more vocal about it, about who and what I thought Trump was doing wrong and who he was and all that kind of stuff. But um, what I was talking about was two things about Biden. One, his non-reaction to the lies that Trump was putting on him and his son and all that stuff. And even during the debate when when Trump was just, you know, going off the rails, right? Biden didn't do anything. He didn't bite. And that's exactly what Benjamin Krem's master said to do in his article, Sufficient Under the Day is the Evil Thereof. When evil strikes, when when people gossip, when people lie about you, the the best thing to do is nothing. That's what he that's what my that's what Benjamin Krem's master said to do. And he was talking, I think, about 9/11. Because he wrote that article, and it was published in Sharon International, but he wrote that article in August of 2001, and it was published in September of 2001. And he was talking about the attack on the United States. The best thing the United States could do is nothing. Be detached, and if, if Bush would have done that, we'd be living in a totally different world right now. Of course, we didn't, and we're living in the world we're living in now, right? Now, also, a man enough to know when when I wouldn't do something. And if I was Biden in the debate, if I was Biden after the debate, if Trump was, a, was coming after me like that, I would have gotten in the dirt and I would have started swinging mud too. <laughs> you know, that's just me. You know, I would have proverbial, I would have verbally kicked Trump in the balls because he's an easy target. As far as I'm concerned, he's, he's not very bright. Uh, he opens up his mouth too much and I would have attacked it. Right. And that's probably not the best and most spiritual thing to do. That's why I was kind of giving Biden his props about how he was handling Trump by just staying detached about it. That was why I was saying about Biden. Not that he was perfect. Not that he he won the primaries fair and square, but that's what he did. Now, the second thing is he talks about the soul of this nation. And I even kind of set it up where I don't know if this is what Biden's talking about. It probably isn't. But... According to the masters, just like individuals, each country has a soul and has a personality. The United States' soul quality is that of the love wisdom ray. And the only time we've ever truly manifested the soul ray of this nation was right during the time of the Marshall Plan. Every other time it's been a personality uh, trait that's, that's done this. So every aid that we've given to the country is all coming through our personality except for during the Marshall Plan. And I say this in nearly every video that a global Marshall Plan is what's going to bring about peace. And the the world is waiting for the United States to start manifesting its soul quality, according to the masters. They're they're all waiting for it. They all know we have it in us to do it, right? So when Biden starts talking about the soul of this nation, and he's the only president that's ever mentioned it, ever, it makes me very, very hopeful and maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, I don't know, hopefully I'm right, that he might help bring about the manifestation of the soul of this country. That's what I was talking about. And I'm giving him a chance on that, okay? Now, as for the election being one fair and square, you know, Trump, there has been no evidence that, that the election was rigged, not one shred of evidence. And if you read the, uh, even the, um, the court documents, when Giuliani goes to the court and because he could, he could say on the, on the courthouse steps, oh, it's a fraud. There's all this election fraud. We have all this evidence. And I, I, I read 
online, the, the uh, court documents where Giuliani actually went before the judge, a, a Trump appointed federal judge. And the judge says, well, are you, why are you here? Are you claiming fraud? Well, no, we're not claiming fraud. <laughs> he goes, why are you here? You know, get out, right? And then the Republicans come out and they'll say, well, you know, they didn't even bother to listen to the evidence. It's because they had none. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they're all making it up, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, and so that's why I was saying what I've said, right? So I'm not saying that, that there wasn't any shady rigging of, of the election on the, from the Democrat side. But I will say this, though, historically, even though there has been uh, election uh, fraud on both sides, the Republicans are far superior and far more effective at election rigging than the Democrats are. So that that's for sure. <laughs> so, but it's that's on both sides, and that's part of the corruption of the political system. It doesn't support the will of the people, of course, you know. And Trump tried to subvert the will of the people, so that's why I was saying what I was saying. So hopefully that answers that question. But anywho, um, I think this is about it for now. But anyway, you guys have a great day. Enjoy the day. Stay safe, and uh, Remember, look forward to talking to you again in future videos. And help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening. And we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Thank you.